Hi, I'm Ken Jacobson, Senior Documentary Programmer, AFI Festivals. Welcome everyone. We're thrilled to have with us for the Q&A, Rosine Bauckham, the director of Delphine's Prayer, and as a very special surprise guest, Delphine Awe. Our moderator for this discussion is Tyra Martin. Tyra is a five-time Emmy nominee and 22-year news veteran as senior segment producer of WGN Morning News. She also serves as exe executive producer of WGN's Community Affairs Programming. Tyra is a member of the Chicago International Film Festival's Black Perspectives Committee, the African American Film Critics Association, and the National Association of Black Journalists. Tyra, take it away. Ken, thank you so much. Um, like everyone that has just enjoyed this incredible film, um, I'm as excited as you are to talk to our guest today. And I've gotten a quick French lesson from Rosine. So I'm going to thank her for her work, Les Prières de Delphina, in French. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Super excited to be speaking to you both here today. Um, Delphine, what's it like to see yourself on the screen? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not used to it, but I'm fine. <laughs> I'm okay. Is I'm with <laughs> my strength right here. So, was I it feel... intimidating to see yourself? Well, was, was it intimidating? Yeah, very. Like sometimes I don't even want to watch because it makes me emotionally. And sure. I, yeah. But uh, when I'm with her, I try so hard because she's always forgetting me <laughs> to watch. I'm not. How many um, times have you seen the movie now? I saw it um, twice. Mm -hmm. Twice. Yeah. When she was putting up. Um, the thing and try that, when we was doing editing, yeah, she came and I watched came it. and I watched, but I couldn't watch to the end. So <laughs> I was so emotional that so I just <laughs> let her watch and but the second time we I said the second time I did it, she said I have to watch. And so I have to. Yeah. I want to applaud you both for your bravery um here. Rosine in taking on this topic, which, you know, there's a, a bunch of topics that are displayed in the film, but also in the bravery of deciding what to keep and what to maybe edit out. There are some moments that um, you could have taken the easy route and said, that's too, that's too deep or that's too personal. We're gonna leave that for Delphine, but you chose to keep it in Delphine. What in incredible bravery to expose those parts of yourself. When you guys were doing the editing, Delphine, was there anything that you didn't want us to see? Uh, no. Like, yeah, that, there are a lot of things that I did want, but not really, because after that, I feel so relief. A part of me is like relief since I opened up to her about me. So I feel so relieved and same time I was scared because people around me, like in my home said, you don't have to put that on people to see. And I said, it is my life and um, you have taken everything away from me, but you can take this one. So I told her to go ahead. Even though right now I'm just, just scared a little bit, but I trust <laughs> her, her judgment. Yeah, there's freedom in that, I think probably. Yeah. Yeah. I, feel, I feel much relieved than when I didn't open up. I was luck and burning and and that. And that was really something that was happening to me. So I feel so relieved to say my story, my life, the way I was living. Then I didn't fake the smile, like when she's always around, I'm going to fake to smile to be fine. But I feel much relieved and I feel more comfortable to speak to her. Rosine, how did you come to hear Delphine's story? Uh, I, it's when I, uh, I start to, to prepare myself to do a film, uh, Chez Jolie Coiffure. 
and Delphine is uh, living near of the gallery of Chez Jolie Coiffure. And uh, I told Delphine that I want to do a film on that gallery. And I asked Delphine to introduce me to someone there, a girl or a man. And she introduced me to Sabine, the character of my film of Chez Jolie Coiffure. And uh, when I was preparing myself to do that film, Delphine told me that before do, uh, you do that, you have to do a film in on my life. And I say that, but I I don't know what to to say about your life. What do you want me to say? I don't think I don't know. I, I didn't I wasn't prepared to do a film on you. What do you want me to say? And uh, one afternoon she told me her story and I was like, it's all the the the, the thematic that bring me the the passion to to do the cinema because I wanted to question my tradition, my country, and the way that we live in Cameroon. And the story of Delphine was the combination of all the the question that I wanted to 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 ask to myself as a girl to question my family or my my country. And uh, it was when I heard her for the first time, it was important for me that I, I had to, to, to tell her story. And two days later, we did it. We started the shooting. Yeah. Um, and this is one of a, a series of films that you've done on women in, from this area. Uh, yes, because I always ask myself, that uh, why am I doing uh, certain things? Why, why in my country, women are treated like that and but didn't have the answer but because the answer was not only in my journey but in the journey of other girls. And I find it with Delphine and uh, Sabine, the character of Delphine Chez Jolie Coiffure and uh, and with my mother also with the two faces of the Banyeke woman. And uh, I try by questioning those uh, life, those person to answer to some of the question that I asked to myself because I want to, to find the woman that I want to be mm. uh, that came from a, a, a country which was colonized and we are, always as African in representation of something that is not us. We are represented by the West. We are filmed by the West. People are talking you know, uh, uh, for us. And by doing those things, I wanted to talk by myself. I want my character to talk by herself. And, uh, and yes, it's a, a way of reappropriation, a way of the, decolonization and deconstruction of the representation of our story. Mm -hmm. This was filmed um, maybe five or six years ago, I think. Yes. Delphine, were you happy at that time? No, <laughs> no. Um, I was not happy. I was um, facing a lot of things that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I was going through a lot of emotionally things and and I sorry. I was watching my my boys and it was a week that was so so I I was feeling like I, I don't need to be here that was a week like I feel like I need to edit all right now mm -hmm. and that's why I picked my phone and I called her and I know she was facing a lot of challenges too when she started shooting because everything was in my house that everything was happening in front of me. 
So I wanted to give her a reason to go ahead, but to give her the strength to do what she has to do. No one need to stop her. But I didn't have the strength for myself. So I, I didn't have anybody to talk to at the moment. I was like, you said Rosen is your sister. I can't talk to my family. So I called her and I told her, I have something to tell you and you have to come over and come over with your camera. So I just went ahead and I was like, whoa. After when that was done, I feel so relieved. And I watched my boy grab me in his hands and I know everything was fine. Even though when I did that, my husband said, I don't have to. So I have a lot of people saying, you, you have to keep it. You don't have to save your life to people. No one is there to help you. You have to help yourself. And um, I feel so relieved at the time when I say to Rosine, because after that, she asked me to watch, but I couldn't watch because I saw myself and I said, you are so strong. I couldn't stand it. I was not like crying because I was feeling bad, but I was watching me on the camera. I'm not used to taking a picture of myself because I see her, I like smiling, even though I know it is bad, giving myself hope for tomorrow, but it never comes So, And I find my strength when I say it to Rosin and I just feel more better even though it's not going, she's always there. It was so difficult to tell her, but um, I never talk about it to nobody. I just live with my thing, live with it. Well, <laughs> I'm glad you were able to release some of that on film. It's healing to hear, hear your story, you know, for women of, every kind from everywhere around the world. There's something every woman relates to um, in your story. And I hope that there is something that every man will hear in your story. Um, to talk a little bit about that, um, Rosine, you really um, were able to capture the sentiment from, her, from Delphine's real life experience of the dichotomy of the way um, sexual violence and um, sex workers are estranged from the people who commit those crimes or use those services. There's no repercussion generally for men, but there's shame, there's violence, there's illness, um, you know, emotional and often physical that end up on the woman. And she's got to recover from that as Delphine triumphantly has. Um, why was that important to highlight from what she was telling you? Um, it's li like Delphine said, um, when I first met Delphine, I was in school of cinema. I, it was difficult for me. I was the first, the, I was the one African black, All African black in black. that school, in that whole school. And it was difficult because I was complex because I was coming from Africa without knowing the story of cinema, without knowing what I coming to learn. And I was shy also. And people, some of the teacher was thinking that uh, I, was not, I was not smart enough to be a director. And uh, they want to, to, to tell me to go, go back to Africa because in that school, they usually take uh, take 10, 10 uh, students every year in that school. And I was in part of those 10 students. And some of the teacher was saying that I'm taking a place of someone who will be much better than me. And uh, it was difficult because I was going to the thing crying and doubting, you know, wanted to go back in Africa. and. 
and Delphine was telling me that you don't have to do that for you. You have to remember why you are here and you have to stay. And the film of Delphine is not a hazard, it's a, a result of two fights, her fight, because we came at the same time, two months different. She came to, to stay with her husband, I came to study. And seven years later, my, after my journey in the School of Cinema, she wanted to, it's not a hazard, it was two fight. And when you ask that, why so long? Because the first time, the first edit, uh, edit that I did of the film, I was looking the, the story of the film with all my angriness that I, I have during my, my five years of school in that School of Cinema. I was not looking only her story, but I was putting all my angriness. It's why I left uh, the, the material uh, behind because it was not right to do that film at that moment because I was so hungry, hungry that I couldn't give the, the real story of the film. And uh, the two uh, previous films helped me to release that hungriness and to, to be able to, to show the story of the film as it is, as she is. And, uh, and uh, all the, I, I remember that when we were, we were doing the shooting, the, my main intention was that I want people to see what is behind what we see, what is beyond that superficial uh, face, what is beyond, because it's what she told me before I took the camera and I want people to see that. What did you find behind the exterior? I find uh, that I was guilty because I was in part of those people that judge, not Delphine, but the, the girls like her, because when I was in Cameroon, we grew up in the same uh, social neighborhood. And, uh, but I had the chance that my parents was there to look at me. But my parents was, was telling me that if you want to, to succeed in your school, in your project, you don't have to stay with the girls like they think. But they, they don't know about the girl like they think. They don't know what is behind those girls. And I want, I discovered that. I came here, my, my first, two first year with a friendship with the pin was challenging because I was challenging with why, why what my parent was telling me and why, what I was seeing in front of me. And, uh, and I wanted to express that. I, I, when Delphine was telling me her story, it reminded me uh, the, the gaze that I put in front of, of some of those girls and I want to express that. When you look at the other elements of um, the film, the there's the violence that happens. There's the story of uh, loss that we see. There's also an incredible immigrant story that you're talking about that I think is so timely to everyone right now. Um, what is that, for, for those of us who have never lived in another country, never had to learn another language, um, never had to make the incredible sacrifices that Delphine had to make, um, to survive in, in a, a new country, to, to kind of pursue her future. What advice do you hope that people learn from this film? I hope that uh, people will, will not judge on what they see in the first time. They will always uh, think about what is beyond what they are seeing. 
at the moment. And always it's what I learn. Now I try to not judge directly, but to think about something beyond, beyond what I see. Usually what we see is not the truth, but if we take time, if we are patient, we will see what it is. It's why it's the result of our friendship. Because in the beginning, I was challenging with what my parents was told me about the girl. I think if I was, if I was hearing that, I would have uh, uh, um, kept my my friendship with the thing, and I will not know her. And uh, the time make me to be, and the distance also, we are here in Europe in the context that we are just two black girls in Belgium and we, we, and I just drop all the things that I was in Cameroon to find the, my own way. And uh, I, I started it with the thing because it was challenging for me. And I hope that people we will make effort to find what is behind what they are seeing. Um, I can tell the you describe yourselves as sisters. There, that relationship is definitely there. For all the difficult moments that we saw on screen, there was a lot of laughter as well. <laughs> as well. How much fun did you guys have doing? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, uh, I I remember. Uh, you gave me a name, your crazy sister. <laughs> <laughs> I, when she was uh, seeing Nigerian movie and tell me about those story, I will laugh. My God, she was, <laughs> I she always was find a way. Everything. I just want to find a way to make her laugh, but sometimes she just think like. I'm going to see Delphine and she's quiet. She thinks I can't read her face. I don't look what is physical. She'll be laughing, but I know what can make her laugh. So I'm going to make her laugh till she leaves. <laughs> so she won't be thinking. She'll be thinking about something else. So I always find a way to make her laugh. That's why, because I learned on my own to be positive in everything that happened. Like if you get a gun and shoot me right now, I'll be positive about it. Like, I feel like... Meeting Rosin to me, it was something I have to do. I was in a, I don't know how to say, I was in the middle of people that I can't speak. Mm. So when I met Rosin, like I, I have never met this girl from nowhere, from nowhere. They just told me she's from Africa, she's black, <laughs> she's in a size. And I just told her, guy, give me her number, let me call her. <laughs> so I called her, I invited her home. We started with some little things. We were having challenges and I know she have to talk to her mom. So I push her, we go to a lot of story behind. I think she have to say a lot of story about her life when she started. So I make her stand by. She can't even do the break here. I teach her. I yes. said, we need money for you to call your mom. You can't do that. So we went to the cabin and we were doing, because that is what I do there, hair and things. So I teach her. So I met Rosine and I learned how to like to say no. Mm. Right now, no. So, because I'm always like, if I said no and you feel, you just go quiet. I feel like, oh my God, he's feeling bad. And I feel more bad than your silence, you know? So I always say yes, not to hurt the other person. I always look the other person. I never cons consider myself. So I, I don't know, that's the way I am. So when I met Rosine, I have to make her laugh. Every time she calls me on the phone, she can hang up with her laughing, that's it. So I just keep her close to me because I have nobody in Belgium. I can be laughing with you today, tomorrow. But if I have an issue, I know who I can call for in the morning, she'll pick the call. Mm. So I have her as a family right here. Rosine, as talented as you are, Delphine is a natural storyteller. Clearly, oh, yeah. <laughs> agree a, a with Colin. She is like a mother that I have in my village that uh, tell you story. Delphine, 
she's a, a great storyteller because the way that uh, she tell every part of her story, I can uh, choose the example of the sequence of her niece. She brings the layer to bring us in the climax mm -hmm. of the situation. And I joke about it. It's why, <laughs> it's why I went to the, the, the school of cinema to learn <laughs> And she gave me that like this. And I was really impressed when I was seeing the, the images and I was like, wow, she's so talented. And I think that it's something that maybe in the future, we, we will try to do something <laughs> else. But because there is something in her, I think, and she's really, when she's, tell story, I think that she, she have a way of saying things. She, she's a great storyteller. And uh, it's why the film is so powerful because she know how to tell her story. I didn't direct her. Mm -hmm. I didn't direct her. I didn't tell her how to, to dress, how to, to stay. She was, she, she, she did it by herself. And uh, I was learning. I, I really learned <laughs> as a filmmaker from her to be confident enough to, to what the character can give us. And because in the West cinema, we, us, we usually uh, teach us to be prepared, to prepare ourselves. You prepare in your uh, imaginary what you are going to do, but you lock your character in that idea and don't give your character all the freedom to give you what uh, they really are. And uh, she really learned me to, to really uh, uh, give the freedom to my character, to give me more than what I was thinking. Yeah, the thing, when I was there and have an idea of what I want to talk with her, I was dropping it after because it was not working with her. Even when she was saying that, what is your jo journal de bord today? What is, what like do you want? Paper. What do you want us <laughs> what to do you talk? Want me to talk about? I was like, so. uh, yes, we can talk about your father, but it was, oh, but I was, uh, I, I, knew, I knew that when I was, asking something, she will not respect it. <laughs> she will do what she wants to do. She will tell me what she wants to tell me. And because the, the mise-en-scene was bringing that, I was giving her the freedom to just be her. Dolphin, what is your dream now? Am I still dreaming? I don't know if I'm still dreaming. I don't There's know the, if I'm going to dream. You've got, I, you've got to have a dream. There's got to be something that you still see ahead of you. Ahead of me. Hmm. Children, I think. My children. Always, always that is my dream. That's not something I <laughs> just talk about. You know about it. That my, my everything. I, I think that the other thing that is like making me very down is that I'm just home and there's a lot of things that I would love to do for my kids, but I can't do it. So that is the biggest part. My biggest dream is to have a job and give to my children what I never have like a, a child, but I don't have it, but I'm still trying. Are you happier now? With my kid around, yes, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm so happy, but not like uh, in all aspects, like there are a lot of things, but I just want to take what I, what I have now, like the love for my kids. I just, I just want to do with that for now. I can't. Like, I feel like I can fight. I can fight, I, I've been trying, but it seems like it's not working for me. I don't want to force it. 
I, I, I don't want to push things. I don't want to do things that I don't like, what going to make me feel bad. So I just want to stay home. My kids laughing. They're okay. They've eaten. I am fine. Mm. But it's quite, I can't lie to you. It is so challenging. And every time when I look at my kid, I know they're suffering and they're smiling. It makes me feel like me. Mm. I hope I can do just a little what you can give to a kid. If I can do that, it would be nice. Well, Delphine, I speak joy to you in, in every part of your life. Thank you so much for sharing so much of it. And Rosine, what a beautiful story that you've told us. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for watching and I'm going to throw it back to Ken Jacobson with AFI. Thank you. Thank you, Tyra. Um, and thank you, Rosine and Delphine for this extraordinary conversation today and for such a wonderful film and for showing us what lies behind, as you say. Um, please, this is to the audience, uh, please tell all your friends about this wonderful film, um, Delphine's Prayers. Uh, it will be available for screening throughout the end of the festival. Um, and also please do uh, talk to us about the film, share your thoughts at hashtag AFI docs. And there are many more extraordinary films and virtual events at docs.afi.com. Thanks everybody for, for being here today and uh, be well. Thank you. Thank Bye you. everybody. <laughs>